Did I scare you guys? Hey, it's so good to see you. I'm back. All right, so far we've talked about the bear and the chipmunk. Today, I have a new living thing for you. Is it the Megalosaurus or the humpback whale or the California condor or the golden tortoise beetle, the lion, the mushroom, or the earth? Okay, I'll give you a hint. This living thing is golden in color and has a uh, sides that's the sides of its body are see-through. That probably gives you enough of a hint. Think about it. <gasps> I think we found it. It's the golden tortoise beetle. So that is the living thing we're going to be talking about today. So first I'm gonna give you some information about the golden tortoise beetle, and then um, I'm gonna show you some pictures and then I'm gonna read you a fiction book about gold. All right, so that's where we're headed. Okay, so the golden tortoise beetle is found in North America. I think I know someone that lives in North America. Who is that? Oh wait, it's you, you live in North America. So we have golden tortoise beetles all around us and I'm gonna tell you how to find them. All right, it's gotta be the right time of year and it's gotta be on the right uh, plants. So certain plants. All right, so these golden tortoise beetles are otherwise known as golden bugs. Okay, they are found in Northeastern America, which we said. Usually there's only one generation of them per year, meaning that they go through their life cycle one time and that's it. Um, uh, so just one, one cycle of um, group of, of bugs. They first appear in the spring. So in May or June is about the time that they start to come around. And then the new population of them, we really start to see them by like midsummer. So like middle of July, when you're at the pool playing, these guys are out and about quite a bit. Um, the, new, the new adults, so the, the grown-ups that are alive there in July, um, they will enter something called diapause. This is a big word. Diapause, right around early fall. So as we head into winter or late fall, maybe, um, right as we head into winter, they enter this thing called diapause, which means that they kind of, they just become uh, dormant, which means they don't, they don't grow anymore until the next spring. So they pretty much go completely quiet and dormant from um, beginning of fall all the way until spring. Um, so let's see here. Um, the development time for an egg is approximately 40 days, which is about one month. Okay, they are about, the beetles themselves are about as big as this pencil eraser. They're very small, so if you found one, imagine how small that would be in your hand. Interesting, right? They vary in color. They can be orange, golden, or metallic, and that is because they become orange, like they almost look like ladybugs when they're afraid. So they turn this orange color and then they get black dots. Um, and that they think is some type of evolutionary um, uh, way that the, the golden tortoise beetle has remained safe. So when it is scared, it kind of makes itself look like a ladybug. But when it's happy and no one's around and there's no predators, um, they are golden and they are um, have that like translucent, translucent or transparent outer edge. Okay. Um, Let's see, when does we said that? Once they're disturbed, they become, they look like ladybugs. That's pretty interesting, that's a cool fact. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the life cycle. So that's a huge word, life cycle. So it starts out as an egg, and then it becomes a larva, and then a pupil, and then an adult. So there's four stages of the life cycle for this golden tortoise beetle. So when it's an egg, it's attached under the underside of a leaf. So around where you live, check out in May or June, look under the, um, the underside of some leaves and I'm gonna tell you which plants in one second. Um, the eggs are oval and flattened and I'm gonna show you a picture of that in a minute too. Um, they, they're about one millimeter, so super small. And um, they hatch in about five to 10 days and they are in clusters of about five to 10 eggs at a time. So I'm gonna put this down for a second and I'm gonna show you 
if I can get my computer to go here. Okay, so this is what the eggs look like. I'm gonna show you on my computer. I don't I hope you can see it since it's a screen to a screen. I hope it's not too, oopsies. Hold on, sorry. Make it bigger, be bigger. Okay, right there, see? That's what the eggs look like on the, un the underside of a leaf. And they're in about clusters of about 20 eggs at a time. And then larva, which is the next stage, they're broad and flattened with branches that come out and they're like little spines. And they're short and thick and they're like yellowish brown color. And that larva matures in about two to three weeks. So I'm gonna show you what the, the larva look like too. The larva's a little creepy, just gonna warn you. The larva's a little creepy. That keeps happening. That's a little creepy, right? That's the larva. It molts several times before it becomes an adult. So it kind of continues to look sort of like that until it becomes an adult. So it becomes a pupa next and it looks very similar. And then we know what the adult golden tortoise beetle looks like because we have this picture here. Looks just like that. So you can find these beetles on the underside of um, leaves, but it, they love morning glories. That's their favorite. Um, host plant and sweet potatoes. So if you have morning, some gardeners plant morning glories in order to attract the beetles. They don't necessarily help or hurt um, people's gardens, but they're very interesting. People are intrigued by them because they're so different than most other beetles around. All right, so I, I wanted to show you really quick the map of North America. And the golden tortoise beetles are mostly right around here where we live, so down the east coast, goes a little bit into the Midwest, and then they're also along the California coast. And um, a little bit the summer in Mexico, summer in Canada, but they're mostly um, east coast, west coast, and a little bit into the Midwest. All right, so I'm gonna read you a quick story about gold, since inspired by the golden tortoise beetle, okay? This story is called How to Find Gold Ooh. by Vivian Schwartz. Let's go find gold, said Anna. That would be dangerous and difficult, said the crocodile. Good, said Anna. Let's go. Wait, finding gold takes planning, said the crocodile. It does, says Anna, said Anna. No one can know what we're doing or they will find it first, said the crocodile. Look at my face. Can you tell what I'm thinking? No. That's because I'm making a secret face, said the crocodile. Try it. You can tell what I'm thinking, Anna asked. Can, or can you tell what I'm thinking, Anna asked? You are thinking about gold. And now? Gold. And now? Probably still gold, said the crocodile. Oh, but you know me very well, said Anna. Uh, it'll do. Let's go. Hang on, gold is very heavy. We might not be strong enough to carry it. Is it heavier than a crocodile? Probably not, said the crocodile. I am strong enough. Where is the gold? Put me down now, said the crocodile. I will tell you. Gold is always hidden. We need a map with an X where the gold is, said the crocodile. That's easy, said Anna. Draw a map of the whole world to be sure. It doesn't, it doesn't have an X, said the crocodile when the map was finished. Anna drew one on it. The gold is in France, said Anna. How do we get to France? Hmm, said the crocodile. I don't know that bit. Not all gold is buried. There is also sunken gold, said the crocodile. Let's find that, said Anna. It's even more dangerous and difficult, said the crocodile. Good, said Anna. Let me explain, said the crocodile. It is like this. Crocodile made another drawing. Wow, said Anna. Wow, said Anna. Is it really like that? Yes, said the crocodile. Anna got the boat. Let's, oops, sorry. I'll just do it like this. See the other side. Let's find the things, you, things on your drawing, she said, and then dive for gold. They went out to sea. Where are the ship sinking mountains, Anna asked. Where are the monsters? Underwater, said the crocodile. Anna looked at the drawing again. How about holes? 
They are sunk with the ship, said the crocodile. Ah, said Anna, finding gold is difficult. Very, said the crocodile. Not dangerous, though, said Anna. Ha, said the crocodile. How about over there, where the sea is boiling and the clouds are like a tower and the fish are in the air? A great storm, said Anna. There will be gold. Hold on tight, said the crocodile. Anna sailed into the great storm and they dived right in the middle of it. said Anna when they could breathe again. I don't believe it, said the crocodile. Gold, said Anna. What will we do with it, asked the crocodile. If we spend it, people will know that we have gold. That's true. Also, spending would get rid of the gold, said the crocodile. Let's not spend the gold, said Anna. Let's hide it. Let's bury it, said Anna, and draw a map. Remember to make an X on it, said the crocodile. This is a very good map, said the crocodile. Let's hide it with the gold, said Anna. That is safest, the crocodile agreed. They went home. You can stop making the secret face now, said Anna. No one will ever find our gold. This is my happy face, actually, said the crocodile. It just looks similar. Anna made her happy face too. We found gold, she said. It was dangerous and difficult. But now it is ours forever, said the crocodile. And it was. Awesome. So I hope you learned a little bit about the golden tortoise beetle today. I hope you remember in the spring to find some morning glories if there are any planted around in your neighborhood, or maybe you could convince your mom or dad to plant them. And then you look under the underside of the leaf and you look for those golden tortoise, tortoise beetle eggs larva, pupa, or adult um, golden tortoise beetles. Um, I had a wonderful time with you guys today. I hope you did too, and I'll be back with more living things.